Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my Savior. Darkness descended over the land, and the people lived in fear. Then something unexpected happened, something that filled the people with surprise. A star burned brightly in the heavens, a star beyond imagining. Our darkness is gone. Though the night be dark and times are difficult, a new light shines for us. Fears are banished. Failures are forgiven. God has heard our cries and has given us hope. Come, let us celebrate God's light given to us. Let us praise the God of hope and promise. Our first scripture lesson today is found in Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear upon you. And the nations will come to your light, 
and the kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes round about and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons will come from afar and your daughters will be carried in the arms. Then you will see and be radiant and your heart will thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea will be turned to you. The wealth of the nations will come to you. A multitude of camels will cover you. The camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba will come. They will bring gold and frankincense and will bear good news of the praises of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord of bright and abiding light, you have shown us in the person of Jesus, your son, a new way to live. You've poured your light into the world and have asked us to live in the light rather than run and hide in the darkness of doubt and despair. You promise to be our light all of our days and ask us to place our trust in you. The journey in this light is risky. It means that we'll have to be very serious about our service to you, giving you our best and offering hope and light to others. In this new year, we bring to you the names and situations of others for whom light seems to be a stranger. They struggle with ill health, economic hardship, broken and damaged relationships, loss of loved ones, and fear and anxiety. We place them in your care. Let your light shine on them, bringing healing and hope. Help us to be bearers of that light in all that we do. For we ask this in Jesus' name, who also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our Gospel reading today is found in Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east, and have come to worship him. And when Herod the king heard it, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And gathering together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he began to inquire of them where Christ was to be born. And they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah. For, our, for out of you shall come forth a ruler, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called the Magi and ascertained from them the time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make careful search for the child. And when you found him, report to me that I too may come and worship him. And having heard the king, they went their way. And lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them until it came and stood over where the child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And they came into the house and saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. And opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their own country 
by another road. Our message today is entitled, Traveling a New Road This Year. A new year brings a sense of hope, doesn't it? Last year, with all its tragedies and illness and problems, disappointments, failures, and sadness is now behind us. A new clean state lies ahead here in 2021. This is symbolized on New Year's Eve by an old man with a sickle and a newborn baby. The old has passed away. The new has come. Perhaps more than we should have in this time of COVID, with whistles and horns and parties, and probably more to eat and drink than we should, some of us ushered in the new year. For others, New Year's Eve, the celebrating may have been more subdued and quiet, but the results were the same. Welcome 2021. Yet beneath the gaiety and laughter, I wonder if there's a gnawing feeling. It's still all the same. Nothing's really changed. If anything, passing from the season of lights and glitter and carols to the season of dark, bleak midwinter only makes the emptiness worse and the depression greater. For sure, there's been plenty in the news to make anyone depressed. And now we've added a new syndrome, coronavirus fatigue. As one commentator wrote recently in a national newspaper, reality seems to crush hope at every turn. The COVID pandemic, the ruthless terror of the Islamic State, crushing economic disparities in our country, the scourge of racism, the increase of global warming, homelessness, ev homelessness everywhere, and also the plague of illicit drugs, rampant gun violence, etc., etc., etc. Also, many of us are feeling personal pains or anxieties this new year. Some of us are wrestling with important decisions regarding a primary relationship or a task to be done. Some know firsthand the powerful effects of a disabling disease, or we worry about health issues in the coming months. Some have had to deal recently with a major loss. Some are wondering if we can make it in the coming year without the presence of one who meant so much. Some of us are feeling very lonely in spite of all the people around us. Some of us fear growing older or fear what the future may hold. Some wonder if dreams will ever be realized or whether 2021 will be even more frustrated and filled with feelings of futility than last year. Many of us are feeling pain or anxiety this new year. What is this pain or anxiety like for you? Well, you know, when we feel this way, the temptation is to stay with the familiar and the comfortable, to kind of crawl back into bed, pull up the covers, or maybe even sneak into the manger with Jesus where it's safe and warm and secure. The temptation is to stay where we are, in the dark crevices of depression or defeat, of fear or foreboding, in the deep ruts of sameness, boredom, or lethargy. But Epiphany, with its emphasis on a light shining in the darkness, reminds us that life continues on, that revelation and growth and new beginnings loom on the horizon, that new roads appear up ahead, new roads that will take us, if we choose to let them, into new adventures, new challenges, new opportunities to be the person God wants us to be. Epiphany reminds us that life continues on, even as one year ends and another begins, one season following another, as they sing in Fiddler on the Roof. The Magi, also called the Wise Men, or the Three Kings, who bring their gifts to the Christ Child, illustrate this movement. But first, just a brief word about who those Magi were. 
They probably were astrologers from the east, perhaps from Persia or Babylon. Today we know them as Iran and Iraq. They believed that human destiny was written in the stars. And though they were learned men of their day, we would consider many of their notions superstitious today. Yet I'll bet if I could pause this and ask you right now, how many of us listening know our own astro astrological sign? Probably at least 90% of us would raise our hands. Nonetheless, the wise men agreed upon one thing. They believed that human events were influenced by a power beyond this world. Now, tradition says there were three of them. The Bible doesn't say how many. In the Middle Ages, they were given names, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. They're nameless in the Bible. The Magi became identified as kings. And that probably reflects on that Isaiah passage I read a little bit earlier. The story in Matthew is about kings and wise men. But these are people added in addition to the Magi. The kings in Matthew are Herod, the ruthless tyrant who stops at nothing to achieve his goals, and Jesus, a vulnerable and helpless baby who becomes known as the King of Kings, a baby who grows up to be a ruler whose power is hidden in his humility. And then the wise men, they're the chief priests and scribes that Matthew talks about well-versed in scripture, and they're called in by Herod to tell him where this so-called king of the Jews was to be born. And then we have the Magi, and they're from the east, and they're inquisitive, adventurous, obedient to their calling, and they seek no honor for themselves. They humble themselves before the Christ child and offer sacrificial gifts of great value. In short, it seems to me, they fit the image of servants more than royalty or those with superior wisdom. And thus, I think they're exemplary role models for us. But it's what they do at the end of the story that is of particular interest to me and us today. Matthew says they are warned in a dream not to return to Herod. In the Bible, dreams are an important conduit for God to communicate with his people. And couldn't that be the same for us? For many of us in the United Methodist Church say, God is still speaking. Well, the Magi, after they have offered their gifts, realize the danger in returning to Herod, and they leave for their own country, the scripture tells us, by another road. They don't hang around to bask in the beauty of the babe. They don't stay where it's comfortable and secure. They set out from there by another road, a new road, a different road than the one they'd been traveling upon. They move on in their journey of life, and so must we. For us, the manger is only one stopping place on our journey of faith. And while the tranquility of the manger may move us deeply, it should never transfix us. The rest of Christ's journey and our journey remains to be traveled. And as we embark on this new year, embodied so well in the spirit of epiphany and the reality of life moving on, a fair question for us to ask is, how can we move on? Well, the answer may be found in the old church camp song we used to teach the children when I was directing church camps in Wisconsin. Rise and shine. Isaiah tells the people in our scripture today, arise, shine for your light has come. They no longer have to live in darkness, nor do we. Rise and shine. Get up, begin again. There's more to come. There are new roads to travel upon in this new year, but there are also powerful forces working against this directive. Apathy, lack of confidence, our physical or mental state, extreme caution or timidity, all these tend to hold us back. And worse than any of these is fear. Disabling, crippling, immobilizing fear. Sometimes in the early part of last century on a dark winter night, a weary traveler came to the banks of the mighty Mississippi River for the first time. There was no bridge in sight, 
Ice covered the water as far as he could see. Could he dare cross over? Would the ice bear his weight? It was so urgent that he get to the other side. So finally, on his hands and knees, with fear and trembling, he began cautiously creeping across the surface of the ice. And by distributing his weight in this way on his hands and knees, he hoped to keep the ice from cracking beneath him. About halfway across, he heard a noise behind him, and he turned to look back and see a man driving a horse-drawn sleigh filled with coal starting to cross the river. And here was this traveler on his hands and knees, the man, his horse, and his sleigh full of coal dashed past him and out of sight across the same river of ice on which he was creeping. Well, aren't you and I sometimes like that? Fear, by whatever name we call it, can prevent us from doing so much. Cautiously, timidly, tremblingly, we venture forth upon God's promises, as though the lightness of our step might make the promises more secure. Yet at the same time, we doubt that they're true. God has promised to be with us. Believe that promise. God has promised to uphold us no matter what. Believe this promise. God has promised to grant us victory over our spiritual enemies. Believe this promise. God has promised to grant us full and free forgiveness for our sins through and because of Jesus Christ, our newborn Savior. Believe this promise. Don't creep upon these promises as though they're too fragile to hold us up. Stand upon them, confident that God is as good as God's word and that our living, loving Lord will deliver them as promised. Maybe you've heard the expression, even if you're on the right track, you'll get run over if you just sit there. And that's so true. So in this new year, let's get up and get going. Let's rise and shine, knowing that it's God's light that empowers the light within us. Now this sounds like a great New Year's resolution, doesn't it? But it won't be complete until we finish the old camp song that I alluded to earlier in its refrain, refrain, Give God the glory. Rise, shine, and give God the glory. How do we do this? By living thankful lives, thanking God for the blessings we've received, and by sharing the good news with others. And we do this individually and together as a church. Paul told the Ephesians the mission of the church is to reflect the light of Christ, to point to Christ's work in the world, to declare Christ's redemption, to reveal the mystery, to make known God's wisdom, but perhaps the most important, to mirror and imitate Christ's love and his deeds of mercy. And I think this is our individual mission as well. As another old hymn notes, we need to go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere, that Jesus Christ is born, and that we've been born into and embraced by the light of Christ ourselves. Rose Crawford was blind for the first 50 years of her life, until one day she found out that there was an operation that could restore her sight. And so she had the operation, and it may be hard to imagine her awe and joy at seeing light and colors, images of people, and the beauties of nature, none of which she had ever seen before. Sadly, Rose could have had that surgery 20 years earlier. She was unnecessarily blind for 20 years because she didn't know about the operation, and she assumed that she was doomed to live in darkness. Nobody told her about the sight-restoring surgery. Nobody told her she no longer had to continue living in darkness. There are millions of people today who live in spiritual darkness because nobody has told them they no longer have to live there anymore. Part of giving God the glory is sharing the light of Christ's glory with others. Shortly before Christmas, I heard about a person who made a contribution to the Salvation Army in one of the buckets that were staffed by a bell ringer. The storyteller said that the young woman ringing the bell uh, nodded and smiled a thank you when he made his donation. He said he realized the ringer was unable to speak 
and she showed him a computer tablet upon which were written some words, true to form. This ringer was out there spreading the gospel. On the tablet were these words, do you know how much Jesus loves you? Well, the man was taken aback for a moment, and then he smiled and replied, yes, I do. Thank you and Merry Christmas. And he said as he walked to his car that he thought to himself, wow, that was neat. Talk about sharing the love of Christ's glory with others. This bell ringer was doing it very effectively. Each of us has a new road ahead of us in 2021. It's another road, a different road than we've traveled before. And as we step off down that road, not knowing what we may find, not knowing exactly where we're going, we can be comforted in knowing that for sure the light goes with us, leading us, guiding us, showing us the way. God will be with us on our journeys down the new road ahead. Even now, God is calling each of us, whoever we are, whatever our circumstances, calling us to get off our hands and knees, to stop creeping and rise and shine and continue the journey, giving God our praise and sharing the good news with others along the way. Now, I know there's some of you out there today who may say, yeah, well, that's fine for the younger folks, but I'm too old to be thinking about starting off on any new roads. Tony Robinson, in a devotional called Still Speaking, responds with this reassurance. There is grace here, not just for the young, but for the old or older as well. It's not hard, is it, to see the possibility of new life and new beginnings when we're young or in the lives of the young? It may be more difficult to imagine such grace and newness when we are well beyond that time of life, when the future is no longer so open or full of promise as it once seemed. All the more reason then to receive the gift of this part of the story, the promise of grace and new life, not only for the young, but for the no longer young as well. Grace happens. Surprise and new life can come no matter what our age. Look today for the surprise of God's grace in your life, no matter what age you are." End quote. So as we enter the new year, hear the words of that old camp song, Rise, shine, and give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine. And may hope dwell in our hearts and voices. And may that sunrise, the light of Christ, shine brightly on each of us as we journey on the new road that we'll be traveling upon in 2021. We're going to observe communion. This is the first Sunday of the new year. And we have here the bread and the cup. This is the bread and this is the cup from the table of our Lord. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. This is the body of Christ broken for you. May it preserve your soul and body unto life everlasting. Take and eat this. And this is the cup. This is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Drink this in remembrance of him. Go tell it on the mountain. 
Shepherds kept their watching O'er silent flocks by night Behold, throughout the heavens There shone a holy light Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed the Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Jesus Christ is born down in a lowly manger the humble Christ was born and God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn go tell it on the mountain over the hill and Now our benediction. With courage we face the future. With warm memory we sing the old year out. With hope in our heart and voices, we face the sunrise of God's new dawn. May the light of Christ shine brightly on each of us as we journey on the new road that we'll be traveling this year. Amen.